the last couple of weeks, we've been talking quite a bit about the growing field as Maryland looks to elect a new senator next year with the retirement of Senator Ben Cardin. One of those people running for the seat is Congressman David Trone, which opens up a seat in the 6th Congressional District. My guest tonight announcing a campaign to represent Maryland in that seat. He's Delegate Joe Vogel. He's back up late with us here tonight on The Final Five. Welcome back. Good to see you. It's good to be back. First time as a, a congressional candidate. What's it been like? You jumped into the race. You're the only one in the race so far on the Democratic side. Uh, how has this been? How has this uh, been different from when you would run a, a campaign in your district for delegate? Well, I'm just so excited about the reception that we've received so far, both in the district and really across the country. I think people see the candidacy, the historic nature of this candidacy, and are excited about it. Uh, and that's exactly what I hope will get us uh, elected next November. You, know, you would be, if elected, only the second member of Gen Z. The first would be Maxwell Frost of Florida, who uh, that was a pretty big deal in and of itself. Uh, there have been some, some younger members of Congress over the last couple of years there. You know, how important is it right now, do you think, because for years it's always been been about you run on your experience, you run on all of this. So how do you translate that and also say, I also have this youthful experience as well? Well, I, I think we can do both, right? I have a proven record in Annapolis. I've been doing this work for over 10 years here in our state. Uh, but it's time for a new generation of leaders to take on the challenges that we're facing. And if you look and think about the threats that we're seeing right now, the idea of waiting 10 to 15 more years and abiding by politics as usual just doesn't allow us to counter the threats that are going to have profound impacts for the rest of our lives on democracy, on the reversal of fundamental rights, on the climate crisis. Now is the time to take on on those challenges. Every election, there seems to be some overriding issue. And we know, obviously, in 2020, a lot of it had to do with COVID. 2022, a lot of it had to do with the economy. What's going to be, is there something in view right now that you think is going to be the, the overall topic going into 2024? Then again, we're talking about, you know, a year off before we have these primaries. I think the real fight right now is the fight for our democracy, right? I, I know from the story of my family, my great-grandparents escaped the Holocaust uh, when they were teenagers. Uh, my parents and my grandparents watched democracy fall in their fall apart in their country of Uruguay when they were growing up. And I refuse to be the fourth generation in my family to watch democracy fall apart in the country I love. But for us to save our democracy, we have to fight back against the far-right authoritarians trying to take it away and restore faith in democratic governance in our country. Uh, I want to go to something that uh, your, your campaign had tweeted something that you bring up about your experience here because well, and it's interesting because you know we've, we've talked quite a bit today about what happened in New York yeah. uh, with with Congressman Santos but you had said about yourself and your experience that you would be uh, you, you were a, a gay Jewish Latino immigrant it, did I did I check all the boxes there is that everything that you said there I'm everything that George Santos is not <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, it, it's interesting, though, because and I don't want to get too too much into the weeds when it comes to George Santos here. A lot of people have talked about, again, the fact he's a uh, he ran on a lot of that. He said he was Jewish, which we played that quite a bit. He said something, though, about why he ran for Congress. Let's play that bite. Take a listen. Politics is boring. Who's who's Minaj? This is Nikki Minaj. I, that's who I thought. Yeah. So why are you naming a bill after her? Well, she was very she was very pro-choice on the vaccine situation and didn't like the mandates of the COVID-19 vaccine. And my, the reason I named the bill with with some nuance there was simply to make sure that we can get pop culture meets politics and we can harness the energy of a younger generation. That's not all the younger generation is looking for, though. It doesn't matter if you put a pop culture rap on it. It's about getting things done. He's a joke. You know, you, you look at, if you want to excite young people, talk about issues that energize young people. Look, I, the reason that I first got involved in politics was after the Sandy Hook shooting, right? And I saw government do nothing as kids were gunned down in their schools. And that got me involved. And I spent the last 10 years waiting for Congress to do something. You want to get young people energized about politics? You want them to believe in government again? Get something done on, on gun violence. You want young people to believe and be energized by government again? Do something about the climate crisis. When you look at what some of the analysts have said about the 6th District, you know, it is a likely Democratic seat out there. David Trone, though, you know, had, uh, I'm just looking at the numbers, in, 20, in 2020, he won with 59% of the votes. Uh, it was down to 55 in, in 22. It's a little bit of a different district than something that would just be exclusively Montgomery County or, or, or Prince George's County there. So what do you, you know, do you, do you approach this a certain way? way, knowing that if you win a primary, uh, you're going to have to win some votes on the other side in a, in a general election. 
Well, my focus right now is on energizing everyone in this district and talking about the issues. We've been in Frederick, Hagerstown, Flintstone, Maryland, Montgomery Village the other day, all across the district having conversations about the issues the people in this district are facing, the challenges they're facing, and the solutions that we have. That's exactly what we'll do for the rest of the primary and through next November. But, you know, when we talk about George Santos and you look at the Republicans that are thinking about running in this district, they're the kind of Republicans that are going to join George Santos and Marjorie Taylor Greene in creating caucus chaos in Congress rather than actually getting things done. You look at Jason Buckle, who's thinking about running. He was he signed on to a letter calling for Western Maryland to secede from the state of Maryland. You look at Dan Cox, who's thinking about running. They look more like uh, George Santos than anything else. So we need real proven leaders uh, who are committed to taking on the challenges in this district rather than just, uh, you know, making more chaos. Uh, again, the primary is about a year off, but you, you're, you're definitely getting a head start in this. Well, yeah, look, it's a big district and we got a lot of work to do. Uh, we're going to win this thing next May, uh, win the primary next May, and we're going to go on to win next November. And I look forward to representing this district in Congress and getting things done. Joe Vogel, good to see you again. Thanks for coming Thank in. Thank you man. so much. And the final five is back right after this. Black hole sun, won't you come?